this video, we're going to be providing an overview of the WorldCheck 1 connector inside of Process Unity. Now, to provide an overview of this WorldCheck 1 connector, this integration can be established on the vendor object if it's enabled through the system setting for vendors, as well as off of the beneficial owner object. So it's important to identify through the subscription where this connector is going to be set up on. So to provide an overview of what the WorldCheck 1 connector is, I'm going to go ahead and dive into this third party for this example. When this is established, you're going to see certain properties that are presented on the third party object that's going to be conditional based off of each configuration. The key to this connector is the WorldCheck 1 case ID. Now, this unique GUID here is going to be created either through WorldCheck 1 or if the process is to establish it through Process Unity, it can be created through a certain screen step, as we can see here, for the screen for WorldCheck 1. Before passing off the parameters, let me take a moment to just go through each of these properties that are presented here on the screen. Now, we can see up top here the case ID and case system ID. These are going to be the unique identifiers that we're going to be able to have established through this integration. We can see here the submitted name. And this submitted name is going to be generated based off of that third party's name. In order to set up the integration, we're going to have this update flag set to yes. And this can be run nightly. For continuous updates of the data, this will continuously flow in. As we can see here, this has been picked up on the nightly job of when this information was last brought in. There is a separate ongoing screening flag inside of WorldCheck 1 that will create new screening results inside of WorldCheck 1 and continuously flowed into Process Unity. If that flag is not established, only the existing screening results will be updated. It's an important fact for discussion with our customers. Now, when this case is first created, you're going to have the opportunity to say uh, WorldCheck 1 search by country, which is going to be a drop down option of choosing which country the screening results should be returned from, as well as search by screening group. This country flag will allow us to weed out all the false positives right away. So you'll see here that there's 54 total results and zero false. If you set this to country of USA and there were 10 of these that were USA, the remaining 44 would be placed in this false screening. So it just speeds up the process. So it's definitely a great field to, to utilize. Now the screening groups are established within the WorldCheck 1 platform. This is how you get tighter results. You can have fuzzier searches or more exact searches. You can choose the type of results you are specifically looking for, such as certain sanctions list or regulatory bodies, et cetera. And down here underneath the resolution status count, this is the area that's going to provide that summary through the integration of all of the results of the uh, screening results here. So how many came back positive, possible, unspecified, false, unresolved, and then that total count. Because these are numbers that are brought in through the integration, you can have notification rules set up when certain uh, uh, thresholds change, like the change to the total screening results could trigger a review for an analyst to come in and look at all new results. Now we can see down here media check. This is only um, applicable if the customer has media check enabled within their instance. The properties will be visible. You would just keep them hidden. Um, and then when they subscribe through media check, they'd be able to have these presented and a workflow can be um, leveraged off of these uh, properties here. Now let's dive into the actual uh, integration here. So once that name has been passed and these optional uh, search criteria is entered, you're going to get these results back. So we can see here that there's 54 total results. Now to review these results, you can navigate into the screenings tab, which will show all of the screenings that came back that were a match against that world check one case. Optionally, you can build custom reports and context to this third party to display this data in a different way. So we can see here those 54 results off of Amazon 
an opportunity to drill into each of them. You can see the different types there are, the status, risk level, and even for those media check ones, if that was established, you can see that here underneath this risk level. Now, what's going to come back through the world check one uh, screening results is six different criteria here of sanctions, regulatory enforcement, we have law enforcement, we have politically exposed persons, we have other bodies as well as special interest categories. As we can see here, underneath special interest categories, this report's gonna show an example of each of the different types of special interest categories. If there were any sanctioned um, uh, results that came back, you would see the number here, as well as the description here underneath sanction. I'm gonna open up this filters here just to show potential uh, filters that you can have established inside of your instance. So for instance, we're gonna go ahead and choose match strength because this is a, a property that is returned through this integration and you can use this to filter down this specific results. So we're gonna choose exact match here. Now this is based off of the uh, group settings inside of WorldCheck1 and now we have what WorldCheck1 has identified as exact matches. And we can see here, there's already one that has been established as an exact match. So let's go ahead into another one here of Amazon EU. So once we get navigated to this screen, this screen has all of the properties that an analyst would need in order to make their decision on a resolution. So we can see here high level information. And then over here is the overview of this screening results. We can see that property that we filtered down on, which is match strength. We can see a quick biography of this individual. Uh, we can see the key dates brought in through Refinitiv, like the entered date and the updated date. Over here are calculated columns, so you can understand how many days ago was this first entered and how many days ago was this last updated inside of the world check. Down here, we can see some geographic information of where this third party screening result is located. And then here we can see some calculated properties that shows those totals that we were just looking on that report on. So using this information here, as well as the screening report and all the sources brought in through the integration, an analyst can go through this information in order to make their remediation decision. Once they're ready for that decision, they can open up this uh, button group here. And we have four buttons established to identify if it's positive, possible, false, or unspecified. We're gonna go ahead and choose false because this doesn't look like uh, a screening result that is tied to this third party that we have onboarded and have been doing business with. So we're just gonna say no match for the resolution remark. Once this has been updated, we get that alert. And we can scroll down here and we can see that information has been populated, that this is false, the risk level is unknown, which is just calculated based off of it being false. And we can see here, the last time was updated in PU and it has not been pushed back up to world check yet. And we can see that through this property. From here, you could go into each of the other third party records. So we can go through each of these 54 that have been brought in. You can remove the filter. But when you're all done, this information will be updated on a nightly basis. But if you did want to build into your workflow um, the opportunity to come back to that third party record, come to world check one, and you can screen and all that information will be updated. For this example, we've gone ahead and clicked that screen button and we can see that this has been finished and we've just updated that third party screening result to false and we can now see this has been updated. Now there are 52 unresolved screening results remaining.